fishing story to tell everybody. This is one of the best fishing trips that I ever went on. I'm going to show you a picture first and probably towards the end before I talk about it. I want you to look at it real good. See those fish in there? I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. I just want you to look at them. This is about 35 years ago. Believe it or not, that's me. Alrighty. If anybody said that they were black drum, you're right. That's what they were. This fishing trip takes place in Virginia, Norfolk. My buddy asked me and my brother if we wanted to go on a drum fishing trip. And this is before we even went on any kind of drum fishing trip before. This is our first time and he asked us if we would like to go. So naturally, the way we love fishing, we said yes. So my buddy and his son, me and my brother, we went on down to Virginia there. And what you do for when you uh, go fishing for these drum fish, now the rules and regulations between the time then and now are totally different. So I'm going to say some things that I don't even know if you could still do it. They might have rules and regulations. But back then, you would go down to like uh, Accomack, Virginia, and go in on the inlets. And when the tide would be out, you could go and dig in the sand and get clams because this is what these drum fish like to eat. So you would get as many clams as you possibly could get. And then you would go ahead and use that for the bait. So we would go ahead and do that first. And then we would go ahead and drive down farther to Virginia there. And then we would go ahead and launch out. And then what you use is a big treble hook. Really big. And you would smash the clam just a little bit. And you would wiggle it onto the treble hook with a big, I guess maybe like a three, four, five ounce sinker with big bay rods. And if I remember right, I think we were in at that one time like almost 100 foot of water. And if I can still remember, it was buoy C10. And the first year we went, I think all we had is a couple little nibbles, and the reason why I say nibbles, for as big as fish as these are, that's all they do. You just feel a little nibble. And we didn't catch any the first year, and um, it was a lot of fun. And the time you go is around May 11th, so naturally the following year came up and we went out again. We went on the inlets of Virginia, we got our clams, and went on out, and I believe the second year, I th it wasn't me or my brother, I think it was the guy that took us, I think he did hook into one and then it broke his line, and I will add, with that treble hook, you have a real long leader, about three feet, which is steel, because their mouth, and they don't have teeth, but their mouth is a braise of and it's all like bone there, and I mean, they can break clamshells, so you know what they can do to string. So, he did get, get into one that year, and it, it broke the line. And I remember, as we were searching around and trying to find these drum, I remember we seen a group of boats out at a distance. So when you see a group of boats like that, we figure, well, that must be a good area that they're doing well. So we hurry up and we're heading out to these boats. And as we're heading out, we got out there and no sooner we got down there and we looked around and there were no more boats. They were all scattered out. Well, we looked out at the horizon and sure enough, there was a heck of a storm came up or coming up. And then we heard it on the radio as well. Well, what it was, everybody was racing back to get into the this little cove, and I tell you what, that was kind of scary. The guy that we were with, I trust him to the fullest because he's a good captain, and when you're out in the boat, and the weather 
gets bad, whew, that can really be nasty, and I'm sure some of you probably experienced that. Well, this guy got us back in, and as we're heading back into the cove, or back to the land and behind the cove there, man, these waves are just about coming in the back of the boat, and it was scary, but he got us back air safe, and we were sheltered in there, and no sooner than this, this storm passed by, I think it was like almost 50 mile per hour, and that's nothing to play around in or with when you're out on the bay. So anyway, no sooner that storm came, it left and we went back out, but we didn't do any good. So sure enough, the third year came and we're heading down to Virginia. We get it at Hackamack, Virginia. And we get out there and we get our bushel basket and we're digging for these clams and boy, at that time, I don't know how it is now, but, you know, we found our clams in, in a very short time, and uh, tons and tons of mussels, but they didn't use that for bait, it was only the clams, so we get on out there, and we go ahead and fix our fishing rod up once again, we get that big, big treble hook, and I mean, it's a large, with the steel leader about three foot long, and we're using probably like... 20 to 50 pound test with these big bay rods. Some were open face and then some of them were the, um, I guess, conventional reels on them. And like I said, we were in about 100 foot of water and I believe we were at Bowie C10. And this year, my brother didn't go. I think he was off to college. So it was me, my buddy, and his son. And I wish my brother was there because he missed out on a heck of a time. That picture I showed you, the smallest fish in there was 40 pounds. And the largest fish in there was 77 pounds. I caught one that was 45 and I caught one that was 50. I caught only two. Uh, my buddy's son caught two. And he caught five. The guy that took us down, my buddy, but my buddy's son, which was the youngest, he caught the biggest. He caught a 77 pound, and the neat thing about it, he hooked into it once, and he said, oh, I got one on, and he was real excited, and he's reeling it in, and the line broke. So he goes ahead and fix everything going up, throws the line down there again, and he caught the same fish, and the reason why we know he caught the same fish is because it had that treble hook in its mouth. And that fish must have been awful hungry and didn't go very far. And that fish took him probably a good, probably 10, 15 minutes to get in, maybe a little bit longer, as big as that fish was. I think mine took about 10, and his mine was 45 to 50 so pounds, so at being 77, probably took more closer to maybe 20 minutes. And like I said, when these fish bite, it's no more than like if you got a worm on a hook and a sinker and you're going for white perch or catfish and just a little nibble and you let them take it and then you set that hook. And they fight kind of sluggish and real slow. It's like pulling up a drum. Maybe that's one of the ways they got drum fish, I don't know, but boy, you just pull it up and it just goes slow. And I mean, it's enough to pull a small boat around. They're very strong. And then one of the neat things about them is when you put them in the boat, they actually make a sound. It goes, hmm, hmm, sort of like a drum noise, hmm. like a souvenir and that's really neat and in 
inside the heads of these fish. This is really neat. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but this is a rock. I don't know. I guess it's calcium build up and I guess they use this for sonar. I don't know. I have to study it more. But there's one on each side of the head up on top of the sides of the top of the fish I guess you would say. And I kept these for like souvenirs, like trophies. And I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like a number five on there. And this came out of the larger, this came out of the larger uh, drum fish. And then here's the back of it. Now this here, I don't, that don't look like a five too much on that one. I can't even see that too much. But anyway, once again, this is out of the larger one. And this came out of the smaller one. Remember, be 
someone important be yourself.